Hey, hello there, and as usual, I'm Aaron from Last Stand Gamers, and welcome. So today we're taking a look at some MFI ships from the Steam Workshop. Now, a lot of the time you guys have requested that I take a look at some more realistic ships. And by realistic ships, you mean ships that you could build quickly in Space Engineers and get them into the action. So we're not talking about giant monstrosities with complex interiors. We're talking about ships that are suitable for survival. So browsing the workshop, I came across the MFI fleet. Now, there's a few more ships. There's a few space variants and there's a few fighters as well. It's a really nice collection. And I'll link you to a few of the ships in the description if you want to check it out for yourself. But I thought we'd have a look over the design. So first, so you can get a little sense of scale, that is me against this ship here. So this first ship we're taking a look at is actually a completely am atmospheric design. Now if we have a look around here, we've got two large thrusters pushing down. We've also got some another large thruster in the rear. And we've got three facing forward. So power to weight ratio is very good for this ship. It should be able to take one of them engines down and it should still be able to keep flying. Now let's have a look at the weapon systems itself. So it's got a nice selection. It's got the Gatling guns on the top. Up at the front here, we have the missiles that are always perfect. Two cameras, so you've got a backup function. And you've got some interior turrets spread out through it as well. There's also some connection points at the bottom. There is reinforced blast doors with welders behind the turrets here. Now that is crucial if you want to keep your welders operational. And you'll see that around a lot of these areas here. So you can see we've got these blast door points below to stop them taking a direct hit into the workings. And we can get them turrets back up and operational. So what's also quite cool about this is if you'll see around the sides of the missile launchers, you've got the self-welding system there. So if you can keep your missile and rocket systems or even your Gatling guns online as you're playing, you will stay in the fight for longer. So let's have a quick look around the back here and just have a look if this is any sort of welding systems that are focused on these forward rocket pods. No, there isn't. But as you can tell, this is going to be quite a capable little ship. So let's jump into my player. Let's head in through the side airlock and have a look at the interior. So the interior on these is, is very nice. It's quite direct. You know where the different locations are. You can navigate through the ship. And of course, you've got some of the mods going on here. So you can see which area of your ship has taken some damage. Now, if we move into the back here, you can see we've got basic survival kits. So if you do die on your ship, something that a lot of players forget about, you need to be able to respawn on it. You've got engine access here to hydrogen. Very nice indeed. And you've got a computer remote control there. This other door, if we just pop through here, takes you back around to the bridge. We've also got access down this side here area to gyroscopes. Very important when it comes to repairing. Of course, the other areas are not accessible. But if we jump into the ship here... You'll notice for an atmospheric ship, this guy is quite maneuverable. And just check out this acceleration that we've got here. That is very important when it comes to fleeing away. We've got the missiles in the nose area section there. Being able to bombard the target away. There's not a load of them, but a small ship like this should be able to maneuver and just check this drift it has on the target. So if we're tracking onto that target, that side drift as we track around the target is just going to allow us to keep the fire up and keep a steady approach. We can also use them large engines if we turn into so that to slow us down and then jet away very quickly. I also love the colour scheme. That sort of orange, white and grey colour really stands out to the eye. It looks really cool. Of course, the problem with that drifty tactic is you've only got what I can tell is three thrusters slowing you down from the side. So that isn't particularly good. Well, they're, they're nice ships. They're really good and they're quite quick at manufacturing, I'm guessing, as well. A larger thruster to the side would counter that and you'd pretty much have a perfect ship all around. So let's jump ourselves out of there and we'll head over to the next ship along that's a little bit bigger. Now, once again, this is very, very capable for survival situations. You can see that we've got Gatling turrets along each side. Now, they can't really shoot directly forward because they've got these outriggers. But you'll notice that there is some decoy blocks here in these nodes cones that draw the fire into these areas rather than hitting key components such as turrets. Once again, the turrets have a welding system. This particular one has four welders, so that one's definitely going to be staying online. You've got the MFI logo down the side, and this is a little bit more of a carrier. But if we come along the top up here, you'll notice that we've got these guys as well. So these are controllable missile turrets from inside, and they've also got a small ship Gatling gun turret on the top. Now, if we come across the top deck, you'll notice that we've got the black color tone there with these white sort of stripes going up the middle a bit like a racing stripe and then we've got this orange low profile type bridge with a nice bit of protection on the top and then you've got bridge access here from the inside 
So if we continue working along, we've got two more of these remote control turrets that are quite handy. If you have a large crew or your other ships get taken out and you've got players spare, manning them could do some serious work. So coming to the back here, we've actually got four large in atmospheric thrusters. We've got another two on either side and then two in the center. We've got these massive big streaks either side of atmospheric. And as we come to the front here, we've got a cingulate in the nose. Now, there's, there's going to be a few issues when it comes to stopping these guys, but I'm, I'm not too worried. We'll, we'll have a look. Let's pop inside the hangar and begin the tour. So as we enter into the hangar bay, we, we've got a modestly sized hangar bay. Remember, these ships are a capable size of being built. So if we build three small fighters, we can fit them in here. We've also got access to either hang, airtight hangar from these buttons. So we can fly a ship in here. A very capable size. A lot of people build hangars far too big. And remember, you only really have chance to play with three or four players. So it's perfect for a hangar of that size. So as we get ourselves in here, we've got a computer block. Everything is labeled. We've got the crew quarters. Nice to have over these little thrusters here. <laughs> Don't fall out of bedding into, a, into one of these turbines. And you'll eject out the bottom of the ship. But nevertheless, we can continue going. We've got down here medical. We've got a respawn pod. Now, I always like to see two on these ships. So I'm just debating if there is going to be another point throughout. But I mean, you can't have redundancy in everything, I'm guessing. So this ladder then takes you up to the bridge. And now that we're up into this area, you can see we can fight from here. You might think this bridge is a little bit vulnerable. Well, these glass slits are quite low down, low profile, and they've got these armored blast doors on top. So as we come out the back here, we have rear access as well. That is currently locked. So there we go. It's so it doesn't suck any of the air out in case you're on a hostile planet. Very cool indeed. Let's head back into the bridge. Let that door seal up behind us before we can open this one. Thank you. And now we're in the various weapon systems. So we can control them from there. We can control them from the bridge. We've got camera access from the hangar bay. That's cool to see. We can also manually close and open the bays from here. That's cool. So they don't have to get out and do that. They can just come straight into the hangar. We've got camera through the front of the ship. So we can see tights off on the horizon. Very, very cool indeed. Now let's just quickly check our menus. And usually you can see that we've got some turret groups synced up here. I feel like we're missing some sort of command center, some sort of room that we've, we've not actually managed to get into. Maybe I've overlooked it into my speed. But let's have a look if there's any remote control blocks. So we've got turret groups. We have Stormfire remote control. That is what we want to control. So let's see if we can get access to that. Okay, nothing, nothing currently on that menu. Weapons blocks. We have got the missiles synced up. Oh, oh damn it. I've blown up the front turret. I should have aimed it away. So all the missile launchers are currently synced together. I'm guessing they're using a targeting script rather than being manually controlled then. Um, so when they spot an enemy, they'll lock on using the script and then fire from that. Still, it would be nice if there was a backup manual control for servers that are not running scripts. Let's have a quick little flight with this guy. So we've got good acceleration. I'm expecting the same as the other ship. So we've got limited thrusters on the side. So I'm expecting a good drift. But that could cause problematic if you do need to do a sharp turn for whatever reason. Very cool indeed, and we've not got any missile launchers at the front in this build. But yeah, this little carrier does have a little bit of firepower, and that hangar bay would be very, very useful. Let's try stopping, so we're going to have to turn our large thrusters into it. That brings the speed down pretty fast. We'll do, yeah, you can see we've got that drift issue on all these ships, it seems to be. It seems to be something consistent across the fleet. Maybe, maybe it could be addressed, maybe it's part of the design. So let's take a look at the final ship. Now this one is probably the most affordable to build so to say we've got rocket turrets on either side we've also got this glass protection panel protecting the camera in this section we've got some turrets of course with their remote building system that's always great to have and this one is a hydrogen design so this means you can get this guy out into space now there's a few more in the mfi fleet that can do space travel and there's a few other fighters but you can just see this one is quite simple in detail perfect for printing so let's access this side airlock and give this one a go. In my personal opinion, I always like a good hydrogen ship. Let's close up the door behind us. That should open this airlock. Thank you very much. And we're straight into the bridge. Now I'm guessing we've got some respawn systems. We've got to have a respawn system surely on this ship. Um, is it tucked in here? No, it hasn't. Okay, so this one is running the risk of not having a respawn. Oh, there it is. There we go. That's a good idea. There it is. I've nearly lost it. So it does have a respawn system on board like all these ships. And this one's got the acceleration of hydrogen that I do love. And of course the side hydrogen thrusters, you've only got one there. So all these ships are very drifty. But this drift 
attacked it, you see this on a lot of servers because it allows them to run rings around that ship. But still, if that single hydrogen thruster does get taken out, you're going to be in a spot of trouble. The hydrogen tanks are a little bit exposed on top, but still, these are cool little ships that you could print off and get into your survival world. It's really nice seeing a fleet like this. Of course, we've only seen three of the ships. If you want to check out more of them, jump in the description, have a look below, and have a look at the rest of the fleet. Anyway, I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.